any, if you're just looking for these points in a vacuum, then sure, you can just set up the, where does the slope of the G curve equal that. Right. right, but that's to find the tangential point. At the time, yes, you can do that to find those two tangent points. That is how you find the two tangent points. I mean, that's what this says, right? To find the tangent points, do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you just plug it in. If I'm here, and I know this, that I have a straight line, right. So how, how is your T not greater than your T star? I think it's a typo. Let's just double check. What was the key of reaction for this problem? Yeah, it can be. Um, I don't know. I don't think that he, he doesn't have it in his notes, unfortunately. Oh, did I put it up there? Is it positive or negative 80,000? Negative. Yeah, no, it should be. No, I think that's just a typo. It shouldn't say that. I think the values. If I'm looking at the curves. Oh, I know what he's got. Sorry. That makes sense, too. That's the high steady state temperature, and then the low one was what we've been calling T star. I don't know why he does it that way in these notes. That's this point. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is what you end up at. Okay, the other thing you can do is plot If you go above this temperature, which is the low tangent point, then you you end up at the high temperature. So if your reactor goes above this temperature, you're going to go to 531. Set this part up where we're making the stability curve.
Yeah. Can you clarify that ignition point? I got confused with all these changing. So the ignition point is the temperature of the reactor, not the feed. It's the temperature of the reactor at which a small increase in reactor temperature will result in a much hotter temperature. So on the graph it's that lower 345 point. Yes, but it's not here, it's here. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And on this plot, This plot would show you both the inlet temperature and the steady state temperature corresponding to that ignition point. Okay, so that would be that 345. Yeah, I mean over here it would say 345. And then up here was the 500 number. I don't remember exactly what it was. 548 or something? Does that make sense? That really helps me. Yeah. And so again, we want to set up So this is how you find kappa for a given So in other words, how do I find this point where I know T naught, but I don't know kappa? How can kappa change in this problem? It's not a function of T naught, is it? No, but it was given, but what if it weren't? Oh, okay. So that's like first time. Yeah, it's just part B. Yeah. Why is T not Why is It's just, again, part B. So if you have a fixed T naught, what determines what, how does kappa show up graphically in the slope? So this is a low kappa. It's a really high kappa. But is kappa only in the heat removal term? Are these two independent? Depends on how I'm changing kappa, right? Yeah. <coughs> so if we don't know kappa, right, obviously at some magical kappa it's going to intersect and find us this tangential point. And so what you do is you set it up without kappa, and you're just varying kappa until these two equations are the same. This equation and then the one that I 
deleted for some reason, which is the one where the slopes are equal. Yeah. Some stuff in Excel. It's really hard to see this plot. Yeah. 